this is what I'm calling my Dharma, basically saying that, you know, I have the right or the, 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 the ability to, to define what my Dharma is, however you wish to define Dharma, and that it has a certain shape, it has a certain, um, it has certain elements. It, it could lend itself to, to structuring, perhaps, as just one, as one view of, of, of a Dharma. So, so, I, so I guess what I'm trying to get away from is um, a concept of the Dharma and rather suggesting that, you know, we have all individually internalized what we think of as Dharma and that that particular Dharma can be expressed in various ways. And so what I've done is, is just taken those elements and just thrown them all out there and saying, well, this is what I think when I think about Dharma. This is what it means to me. And th these are the things that I think about when I think about my Dharma. Um, and, and like I said, I'm, I'm, at the moment, I'm, I'm calling it an awakened, compassionate wisdom for, because it, I think that adequately explains it, its basis. But yeah, it, it, like I said, it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. So I don't know. I mean, this is just uh, something to be, I don't know, looked at, criticized, and, and um, questioned. But I'm just wondering how anybody else might want to sort of express their own. Dharma and, and, and would doing it in a manner like this be in any way useful? Uh, yeah, I read this, um, but I think you've added to it since I saw it first. Yeah, I've added a few things, yes. Yeah, it's, um, it's... I, I do it every day, but my Dharma changes every single day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it was interesting, and the, I suppose the issue for me is it's a, it's a lot of stuff which is interesting but it lacks a, a structure mm -hmm. in that um, in order to be able to follow it or to engage with it I needed some way of, of navigating mm -hmm. and that was the bit that I, I couldn't see I could mm -hmm. see some words which I could uh, respond to and have and I could see, yes, there's stuff in there that I understand, or I think that I understand, or I have my understanding of. But um, I'm not sure whether the way I'd be coming at it is the same as the way that you're coming from at it, because mm -hmm. I don't know the context in which it's said, other than the general context of, of the Dharma. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it comes back to this idea of mapping, in that there needs to be some shared understanding of uh, how we're arriving at at this. And, and, and so a sort of under, underpinning structure is what I think I would need mm -hmm. yeah. in order to be able to make more of it. Um, so for me, for instance, um, the way I was thinking about it before was a sort of um, a base level, uh, the, the basement the foundation that which uh, the few things that I thought that seemed to fit into there um, were to do with the basic scientific principles and the the, the Buddhist principle fitted in with that was um, the idea of uh, impermanence and perhaps also a conditioned what's it called um, conditioned arising or dependent arising that, that one thing causes another mm -hmm. that that seemed to be like a very basic mm -hmm. principle which had parallels mm -hmm. in, in from a scientific perspective mm -hmm. um, and so if if that were a, a sort of fundamental principle level then I could say right oh, I can I can have a dialogue about that because I understand the things that are at that level that's sort of what we're talking about. 
these things, which are sort of irreducible, if you like, and, and operate at a, um, a universal level rather than a human level. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you get to the uh, human interactions, let's think what you've got. So you've got evolution. Well, evolution, if it's Darwinian evolution, only happens at a, a, a life level, which is a, it is a higher level, I suppose, yes, let's say mm -hmm. it's higher up the scale than, than a fundamental level, because that, yeah. doesn't, that doesn't happen at mm -hmm. the base level. Whereas uh, entropy would happen at the base level, mm -hmm. uh, because that's a sort of fundamental principle, and impermanence would happen at that base level. Mm -hmm. So that's where um, I suppose for me a, a, that sort of map helps with the being able to have a dialogue. I guess, I guess one, one thing that I tried to do in this was to not structure it too much at this point and just try to get what are those things that I think about when I think about my dharma, and then just getting those elements out, and then um, and then going back and and thinking about structure and where these where the, all these various elements might fit in, in, a, in a more structured format. So you know, I think I don't know. I mean, I'm just thinking that it was easier to start with those things that you know, just those elements that I, that I thought about when I, when I thought about Dharma and what that means to me and then perhaps going back and then reworking it, re-examining all of these things and, and asking, you know, um, what does this really mean? Where does this fit? Um, you know, how, is, it, is it structurable? Um, you know, it, it may be, it, it may not be. I mean, just just one very simple problem, for example, um, impermanence. I mean, is it entropy or is it impermanence? Which one is 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 higher up that scale? It's it's you know they could be interchangeable or they could be different. And so, you know, that's just a, a very simple example of how you know that, that structuring something with a particular title or or yeah, or a particular title can can have implications further further down. So you know the, the actual structure has to be it has to be quite careful. But but the thing is, I think you know the, these structures perhaps aren't aren't going to be the same, and and they shouldn't be the same. I mean because I mean many of us have come to these same sort of vaguely the same conclusions about you know what is a good way to to respond to life, you know, that they can be structured extremely different from, from depending on just the particular framework that, that, that you've come from. And I've tried here quite deliberately to, to avoid any, any mention of provenance. So, you know, I'm not mentioning, you know, Buddhism, I'm not men mentioning Gautama, I'm not mentioning any particular stoic philosopher or, or, or Robert Sapolsky or, or you know, um, any other or even, um, you know, Stephen Batchelor, you know, the, to, to sort of as, ascribe provenance in a particular dharma, I think sort of avoid, avoids us actually taking responsibility for, for actually expressing our own dharma uh, without the need for provenance. I, yes, I, I, I can see what, well, I, think, I don't know whether I can see what you're doing. I can, can see that you're putting things together and I can see that you don't want to um, have any undue influence um, on anybody who's coming at this. On the other hand, you do have, that, I think there has to be, well, I guess from my point of view, there has to be some way of navigating. There has to be mm -hmm. some way in. Mm -hmm. And a list of words is not sufficient. Well, I was thinking that as more as a starting point from which you could then say, well, then these are the elements. This, these are the things that I think about when I think about Dharma. And so then having got these elements, can it be fitted into a particular 
structure and is that you know, how how is that structure universal or are other or is it sort of you know well as i was saying I, I think i think you could for instance you could have two areas one which is the human and one which was the universal it doesn't matter whether you're a human or alive or anything and you could fit some things in one category and some things in another and and some things would be in both we are we live in the universe but for instance um, we could have if you had uh, quantum mechanics as a sort of basic principle it's i don't think it would be in a dharma but if you did then uh, it would it because we're all made up of particles we're all influenced by it but it doesn't really have much effect on our daily lives so you could say that it, that is something which is outside of um, the human realm and i think as i said i entropy it, or the could be in could be in well we well, certainly would be in in both um and the the nature of entropy from a scientific perspective is different from our perspective but we live and die and that sort of entropy when we you know, we become become less organized and we become eventually when we're dead we, you know, we disperse and become more more chaotic there is more entropy in our in our bodies but at a fundamental scientific level entropy exists as something which doesn't have the element of time attached to it it's the, the same backwards as forwards so it, the time element only relates to us i mean you could have time again you could have the time as it relates to humans or living things um, but time from a scientific point of view isn't the same and so that would be in a different realm and just so for instance you could have those two you could have one which was say sort of universal applies to everything and those that apply on a human level but that wouldn't mean that things are discrete one in all just one or the other some perhaps would only be in one um, but some might be in both i like the i i i mean i i feel i come in sideways i i i don't quite know if i understand the project what i like about it is that you called it my dharma I think that's a fabulous idea. And I love reading your list. And it's inspiring. You know, and they say, oh, Gary, it's his, he, I heard some of that more explained because we had discussions before and heard you speak before. And some things are just intriguing. But that's your list. And, um, and immediately I could go and, and contemplate that list, you know, what it would mean for me, what's missing. They're just like what Rupert's just done, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. compare and contrast in a way. Yeah. But yeah. that's inspiring, isn't it? And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, for, our, for the bigger idea, and, and it, for me, this goes back to your original idea to define the Dharma words a bit better so that we know what we're talking about. Uh, mm. And then the navigation for me would be on a, on a, on a hyper level, up, upper level, where this would have a place in, you know, uh, uh, that map idea. So that mm -hmm. it, you don't have to speak for everyone. You, you speak of mm. your dharma. Mm -hmm. What if we had a hundred thousand my dharmas, you know? Uh, well, that's what I'd, I'd like to have. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't that be great, you know, so that, and then you might, again, have your, the, the people who you especially like or you heard about, you know, a bit like on Twitter and you follow those guys, you know, mm. because they, it means something to you. And when they add a new word or, or refine something, you hear about it. And, mm. and that, that would be a fabulous thing for me. I, I think mm -hmm. that the step is to say, my dharma which mm -hmm. I feel is rather than aiming for the universal uh, the definition of it, it is kind of informed and well-intentioned people stating their my dharma. And, and I think that is as far as we can go in our chaotic internet world. Mm -hmm. Um, and should it be policed? 
I don't know, maybe, I don't know. God, Police. God. Well, in, in, one has to say, you know, the next nutter could come along and say, my dharma mm -hmm. is shooting the Muslims down. I don't know. Um, well, that's, that, yeah. well, that's where you <laughs> get, get, get down into the reputational yeah. issues. Um, yeah. you know, where there, are, there are ways of, you know, you know, giving certain people or ideas a reputation score. Mm. Um, and you know, you know, you, you, you can quite easily get, you know, idiots coming in and doing nonsense. Yeah, that's always going to happen. That that's you know that's what humans are all about. Mm. Um, but you know, it, it what really matters you know, because yeah, giving people you know, reputation is actually a, a nearly a currency in in many places on the web now especially in the programming field. Um, you know, that there's massive sites you know, for, for programming support, um, which, which operate basically on reputation. You know, you can ask questions in a particular area or in, in, a, in, a, in a technical forum, and you'll get lots of different uh, responses back. You'll click the right one or you'll click the one that's uh, the best fits the, 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 the problem. Um, they get a tick, they get an extra point, and people see those points, and, and they say, oh, this, this, this guy's got, you know, 140,000 points. He's been around a while, and he's got, he's, he's accrued a lot of, uh, you know, reputation. I mean, it mm. doesn't tell you everything, but it tells you mm. something. That's um, a good idea, and, and, yeah. And, and that, that reputation is then sold. Um, you know, people can then say, well, you know, if, if, if they want to engage this person to do a particular project, they have a complete CV, basically of all the, all their answers to you know, possibly tens of thousands of questions, mm -hmm. and that they, 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 they know what this person is capable of. Uh, so it's actually, it's like marketing. It, it might well be open source, uh, but at the end of it, you know, people get rep are actually competing for reputation. Um, and and they then use that, then monetize that reputation in, in private contracts and you know, in their case programming and things like that. So you know, there are ways of you know regulating that sort of you know uh, uh, outlier behaviour um, without being sort of too draconian about it. Uh, people can make their own judgments, and they, and they and if they've got the mechanism to do that, then then you know that that. That, that reputational thing can be can be clear to everybody. Mm. Mm. Uh, but yeah, but so I don't see that. I see that more as a, a technical problem than a than an actual problem. Oh, that's good. Um, mm. If if you get uh, enough, um, it, it really comes down to getting a, a critical mass of of people, I guess, defining what what their dharma is. You know, without sort of resorting to you know grabbing their um, you know, their book of scriptures or their, uh, or their guru or what this guy said or what God said, basically saying, well, this is my dharma, um, without referring to any outside source necessarily for that personal dharma. Now, of course, you could then sort of, you know, you know reference it with, you know, with things that have influenced that particular element of your dharma. No, you know, I, can, I, you know there's, I mean, the provenances for, for me, for example, would be, you know, my readings in human evolutionary biology, which is probably one of the, the major influences on me. Of course, perhaps a lifetime of exposure to Eastern religions. Um, so, you know, it's not exactly, you know, Buddhism is, as a religion and as a philosophy is not completely um, you know, it's been with me for a long time, and of course, just the, the explicit sort of um, you know what, what uh, the, the early Buddhism of um, as expressed by Stephen Batchelor and others at Bodhi College. You know, I'm basically in, fully in concordance with that particular Dharma, uh, but that's just one element of my greater Dharma, in, in which I sort of bring in you know elements of my own life experience, my own study. Um, so yeah, that, that is, these are the things, these are the provenances which have produced those elements of, of, uh, of my dharma.
yeah that's how it, i mean is is it meant like like that as as one element of that big map that we were dreaming well, well, of that... a while ago of you know because yeah. otherwise if we just had that it's kind of too many words you know in mm -hmm. a way um mm -hmm. uh it's it's it stays very uh intellectual and one-dimensional and the, mm -hmm. the whole idea of the resource would be that it includes the arts and the um mm -hmm. and background reading i mean you could you could have a hyperlink of behind every line of 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 your list there you oh, know this was my reading this is my favorite also yeah. on that things like that which would oh, that's be... very important that's very important yeah. just basically saying you know, this may well be my dharma this is where i got it from yeah yeah uh, that, that, so that someone know, can a, figure it out or follow or exactly. say ah oh, i never seen entropy yeah. in that what does yeah. what does he mean you know um so that it 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 kind of gets that richness, or Rupert mm -hmm. might say, you know, um, watch that, you know, or, or have a look at that painting. You know, you can really um, see what we're talking about in in mm -hmm. this setup, or or an invitation to the um, meditative drawing, or. Um, yeah, so that it it gets that richness, but but as a core of, hey, here someone makes a statement. This is my dharma, and if we have lots of them, I think that's that's great. You know, that's a that's mm -hmm. one hub in that map, and one set of resource where I could say, well, what does Gary think about it? I'm interested. You know, I I. I like what uh, what he says. Usually, I'm interested to have it really spelled out. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, I think that's a, a very important point, and, and I actually sort of did mention it. Um, but I think that the frameworks of how you got there are possibly as important as what you actually express. So you know, after this sort of you know throwing out sort of a heap of words about you know what I think about. When I think about my dharma, you would also need to to to, or to list, or, or not just list, but but to put in some sort of you know these are the, these are the frameworks from from which I I drew, and which sort of brought me to this place. Mm. And I mean that 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 could be extremely broad. It could just be lists of books if you want, or it could be you know um, as you mentioned a a picture. Uh, that, that might express something about how you got to a particular point. You, you, you perhaps you, you saw an image and that sort of uh, informed you about a particular element of what you now think is, is part of your dharma. Uh, so it would, it would be, there'd be, I guess, two, two important parts to this very simple level. And that would be sort of the, you know, the elements, you know, obviously, hopefully in a more structured manner uh, but also just as importantly how i got there i'd like the particularly i like the uh, my dharma um and it, that chimes very much with what julie was saying about what she felt that, that, that you know, the whole thing really mustn't have a sense of a um the rather the dharma um mm -hmm. it made me actually wonder whether the forum could be called my dharma rather than a mm. dharma, uh, because mm. even A suggests that there is a particular one, whereas yes. my doesn't. It's sort of mm. whoever adds to it. So I mean, it's mm. quite nice. It, it's all it's personal but impersonal. Yeah, um, that's an idea. But it's just coming back to what I was saying before. I think that it, I can see how once in you can go to. Um, somebody's dharma and like I was saying you could follow that person if you were interested in that person or if you thought what they were suggesting was interesting there has though I think we all sort of agreed there has to be some structure um, which allows the initial uh, invitation mm. and it will become easier if and when we get to a stage where we can see what those um, 
what those the headlines for those structures are, what are the mm -hmm. titles mm -hmm. for those areas. And then how do you start to do this taxonomy, this categorization, and allowing for all of the overlaps that there will be within that. So I think that for me, that's just, it's that, it's that, the, the navigation side, how, how do you allow people, how do you invite people in, in order to be able to navigate this? And because I, just because my head works in, in 3D, it, it, it's always a sort of, for me, I, I just like, I like the idea of maps. I like the idea of being able to, you know, the concept of navigation is, mm -hmm. it's a, it conjures up images of movement um, and moving from one place to another. And I, and I think going back to the uh, structure that you sent on the email, which I think was to do with um, evolutionary psychology, how it was, that was being mapped out by using uh, the metaphor of the periodic table. Mm -hmm. uh, that sort of, that was an intriguing idea. I don't think it's, it's not directly relevant for, for this, but that idea of having a navigational tool is very helpful to be able to, you could see, well, there's this element and then there's an element next door to that, which is similar, but it's only you know, a little bit off because of its, uh, its mass. Um, and these ones are related and these, these ones are all categorized together. So this uh, selection of things on the periodic table are over here and these are, are over there. These are light gases, these are heavy metals mm -hmm. and so on. But they're all within this same map. They're all within this, this same category so I can move between them. And if I move into ones, there's bits of Gary in there and I move into that, there's bits of Gary in that one. And that's another way of seeing it via the person yeah, for me, navigation and a shared understanding, I think, uh, uh, with sort of key elements. Well, I'd, I'd, um, I really liked the kind of map, uh, map of, of a city. I liked that idea yeah. because it, it went back to the city metaphor and it has all these different levels and hubs, you know. Mm. For, for example, you could go, you know, I, I deal in my, my imagination, you could go to the museums and look at relevant artworks and you could go to, um, um, to somewhere where you can learn more about evolution or, you know, so it, it could have all these different layers and they would be interconnected. I mean, that would be incredibly complex but i like that mm -hmm. and i like the city reference um i, I like the, the idea of the buildings you could have museums and libraries and you, know, you could go to the national history or natural history place or some yeah i i think that's very lifelike that's what people yeah. seem to mm -hmm. have come up with you know uh, that's how they structure themselves in a in a complex relationship with each other. Mm. They create these hubs and pathways between them. Mm. And that, that would fit very nicely with my dharma because if, and if you were following people, you were sort of almost literally following them. Yeah, the, they have a sources. profile, you know. Yeah. So That's they, their profile. They, yeah, they've profile. been to the library, they've been to this yeah. part of the library and this is what they found here was interesting or they've been to this museum and they've found this or they've found oh, this. Oh, that's it. Oh, that would be so cool, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. You could follow them around. Like, be, mm -hmm. I've been here. I bought that T-shirt. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in a museum in front of this built, mm -hmm. uh, painting or whatever. That would be very cool. <laughs> well, this actually feeds into the, to my thinking about networking and interconnectedness and the, and the ways that can be done um, yeah. in, in this world now. Um, and it, you know, it, the images are that of, you know, basically a, a series of hubs with lots of, lots of um, interconnections, mm. um, which is basically what you know, cities are, they're groups of groups 
aggregated in a particular area, uh, and they have interconnections between themselves and with other with other hubs. Um, that's sort of one way that I, I've been visualising it. But in a network, I mean, it's sort of in a network sense. You know, how do you express that? How does that get accomplished in uh, a digital world, which is dominated by by um, you know platforms? Um, and, and okay. Okay, all right. Yeah, th this is actually something I need to um yeah to to think a bit more about, but it's a it's a, a fairly fundamental thing in terms of how we actually undertake discourse. Um if we you know, we, we, it's all very well to talk about you know, my dharma and the, the dharma or a dharma, in a, but if, if that's not being, you know, if, the, if that's not being talked about and distributed and being, and, and if people who are not being interconnected as a result of that discourse, then, then I guess it's of, of, you know, only limited use. Um, one of the main problems with the digital world is set up at the moment is that you know everybody wants to be a platform, everybody wants to be on top. There's no genuine intercommunication or, or interconnection. Um, just an example. Um, how how would um, the secular dharma.net website, which is basically a you know a, a platform like Powerline. How does that intercommunicate with another website? Uh, for instance, the um, what was it, the New Zealand Mob, the Secular Buddhist Network. You know, that, that's a, I mean, there should be ways of intercommunicating and sort of say, for example, if 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 they post something that automatically comes into to um, seculardharma.net, if we post something, it, it automatically gets posted to them. These sort of interconnections using um, web models are surprisingly difficult um, because of the, the way that platforms have, uh, have dominated. Not, and it's not just platforms like you know Facebook and Google and whatnot. No, it's, it's platforms like um, uh, WordPress, which make it extremely difficult for this sort of you know uh, sideways interconnection to, to actually happen. And for people to act, be able to actually visualize so the interconnections of, of one platform with another, um, just because of this top down um, website domain paradigm that, that you know, has, has emerged since you know, 94. So, you know, and, and also in think, thinking in terms of, you know, you know a, a, well, you could call it a dharmic network, which is much more distributed and, you know, and, and much more peer-to-peer -peer and, and much less hub. Although you know, the, there's, there would be a requirement for hubs, but, but that, there'd be multiple hubs and there'd be interconnected hubs, um, not just solitary platforms trying to be the one on top. Um, so you know, there's all sorts of implications of, you know, um, how the actual discourse is 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 driven, uh, and and the paradigms that are actually used to do that, because if the, if the old paradigms are used, and I'm talking old by me, like I mean the web, um, it's a uh, a very limited paradigm. Um, it, it tries to enclose and prevent you from sort of you know branching out of that particular um, little little world. Um, and it prevents interconnections and prevents you from seeing uh, the interconnections. So there's actually network models that, that were um, prevalent before the coming of the web in, in about 93, 94. Before then it was much, much more distributed. Uh, a little bit more chaotic for sure, um, but uh, the principles of, of you know, decentralized networks are fairly old, they're not unknown, they're just being completely uh, 
suppressed and completely dominated by, by the new web paradigm. So I think it might be possible to actually uh, rejuvenate those old uh, networking paradigms so that uh, we can get back to you know, much more distributed and much more interconnected, genuinely interconnected hubs and spokes and whatever. Uh, but yeah, that, that's sort of a, perhaps getting too far ahead of, my, ahead of myself. But, but, yeah, but the point is, I guess, that the way the discourse is actually conducted is as, uh, as important as the discourse itself. All these sites here are basically, you know, platform-like. They're, they're basically top-down with very little visible interconnection. Like this a guy here, Enzel Ganger. Um, I think that means lone wolf in, in, in uh, Dutch. I don't know whether you know his channel or not. It's, it's no, quite no. Good. It's, it's quite good. It's quite good. It, it, you know, he, he's um, clearly, clearly a Dharmic, but he, you know, he, he, he pulls probably a bit more from historic traditions, but, but uh, certainly from, from Buddhist traditions and early Buddhism as well, uh, as well as from psychology and, and human biology. Uh, you know, that, that's just one example of, say, say a person or, or an organization or a, some sort of entity for which there should be a connection, there should be an interconnection. And, and of course, the more interconnections you have with, with these you know, other people and groups and organizations are expressing dharmic ideas, the, 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 the tighter and the, the more defined that this discourse can become. Because at the moment, there's no, inter there's no practical intercommunication between these particular uh, sites or, or platforms. Yeah, the no, I, I, think I'm, 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 I think I get the idea. Yeah. Um, so you know, it, it's, a, it's a question of sort of distributing rather, rather than trying to sort of now, being a, you know being a hub is not a problem, but you know th those hubs have to be interconnected horizontally, ver vertically, and and what wherever. It's uh, not just sort of a the top down par paradigm that we've been so used to for the past um, um, well how long twenty five years or or whatever no yeah twenty five years or thereabouts. So. Devising um, new networks that can that can uh, facilitate interconnection between these. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I think I, I could get this, and I can see how it can grow, and I can understand the principles. And if this were an easier way of making connections between them, and if somebody found this, then there would be an interesting resource. I'd still get back to the issue for me, of how you navigate a, a such a huge network of mm -hmm. information. Uh, you need, mm -hmm. it's just ways in, and we can't cope with so much information. It becomes overwhelming, it becomes too much. We need, oh, yeah. to be, we need to be able to see how this fits my dharma, this fits me, how this mm -hmm. suits, how, where is my, invitation where is my mm -hmm. way of allowing an engagement um well because if i just click on one and i don't like that one or don't find that particularly mm -hmm. good or if i do find that particularly good then i i'm sort of i'm i'm stuck because i'm i'm either not going to follow it or i am following it too much um I'm, mm -hmm. because i haven't i can't spread myself over all of these things there's mm -hmm. just isn't enough time in the world to do it. So it comes down to me for those which have more sympathy with my Dharma. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to find that. Because all I've got is titles, all I've got is um, images. I don't have mm -hmm. enough information to be able to find my way through this maze of through the library. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I don't think it's, it's really a matter of you know trying to read everything that everybody says about about um, you know, dharmic issues. That that would be you know, quite clearly um, 
Yeah, no, it's not. I'm not asking. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about reading everything. I'm talking about finding those things which are closely related to me and mm -hmm. my interests. Well, that, that comes from your frameworks. The, the frameworks that you actually use to actually build your 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 dharma. And from from those from those frameworks comes a whole lot of provenance, provenances and uh, uh, references and and um, images and 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 music and, and all sorts of things which actually feed into to actually inform that particular expression of your dharma. So, but it's, also, it's, it's a way, I, I guess, it's, it's just, it's not, the, the discourse is actually just, I guess, a part of the, of, of the whole project where, you know, certainly, our particular project perhaps could be theoretically to to get people to find their dharmas and to you know, show us how they got there. And the discourse around that is actually where we need, I think, to build interconnections and, and, and channels so that people can say, well, okay, that I can see the relationship between these particular you know, particular thoughts. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you agree 100% with that, with any of these things either. Um, no, I, I, just... so I think we've come to the stage now, I think, whilst, because we've, we've got this channel, the YouTube channel, we've got the forum, and we're starting to put things on it. And it's not, we've got moved from the stage where we were talking around the issue, <laughs> or there was a big hole in it, so we've now put things in the, in the middle. And I now need to know, really, I hate the term mission statement, but I need to know what it is that we're trying to do. Because obviously we can't do everything, and so what now should be the focus? Because I think I'm sort of coming to understand the, 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 what you're talking about, but I don't yet know what the aim is. Um, and I... Well, I just so to, to my to, sorry, no, no, no. <laughs> no to, to my, to my, for me, the, the the ultimate goal, if you want to call it that, is is to to produce discourse about dharma. That is sort of the yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that, and I think that's fine. That, and, but we we yeah. talked a lot sort of around that. Yeah, but, but in, in terms of how you do that and where do you start to do that, I, I think, think it, I don't. It's not the how; it's the where. I, the, yeah, it's it's what is it that we we should be focusing on as a small part of that. Yes. Well, I think there's probably two things. You know, that, that the my dharma concept perhaps might be you know doable, achievable, and and from that you know you know depending on when and if it even evolves, it can then you know. Start to be structured, and then you can start seeing forms taking shape in in, in people's different expressions of uh, of how they express their own particular dharma. You know, perhaps using examples from others as well. You know, so to sort of, so that people have got an idea of what it is that uh, we're thinking about. They may borrow things from here and there. They may just do their own. It doesn't really matter. Um, but if at the end of the day we have, well, okay, that, that is your dharma and this is how you got there. I mean, there's two, two important interrelated elements. Now, I think it's, it, it is critically important that people are able to express their particular dharma in a manner that is, is not dependent on, you know, because my God, Told me so, or because this guy said so. Um, you know, really, sort of letting go of all of that, or even just because science says so. Just letting all that go and just saying, "This is my dharma. This is what I think. This is how I think, or this is how I I would like to to to, to be in the world." Um, but, but having done that, then going back and then saying, "This is how I got there." To this particular expression of my dharma. 
Now, now from those two things, I think we can then say, well, okay, let's start looking at all of these particular dharmas and try try to sort of put some structure around. Uh, because I mean, I, I think you know, I think we have an idea of some of the the, the, the big headings that you know are, are important. Uh, but surprising things can happen when when people sort of lay out all their cards on the table and and uh, and and suddenly you can um, see things that perhaps you you didn't see before. If you with with sufficient numbers of of people, you know, basically expressing what it is that is that, that about their dharma. Does that make yeah. sense? Uh, well, does, is, that, does that answer your question? Well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but I, it comes back to a fundamental point about you know the the, the first thing that that you said uh, in November was the definition of dharma. What does it mean? What is secular dharma? And we're using the term as if we know what it is. So when we say, you say what your dharma is, then you sort of think, well, I don't know. And only those people who've come across the term dharma would, uh, would have any idea about mm -hmm. what it is. And so I'm not sure I could list my dharma. I could list things that, you know, that, that might be but because I don't have a definition for what the Dharma is, other than well, this is the, the teachings of the of the Buddha or you know whatever, it's difficult. You know, we can yeah. I mean, I, I like my Dharma as a as a as a as a concept, but that's because it's me and because I'm happen to be in this position at the moment. It's not inviting for people who who don't have a Dharma, who don't have their own. And who don't have that background and have not done secular dharma courses and have not thought about this a lot. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people who are interested in mindfulness who mm -hmm. won't have heard of what the dharma is. And there's a lot of people who are not interested in mindfulness who wouldn't be interested in mindfulness if they thought it wasn't mm -hmm. just a therapy. Yeah. Then there's a there's a big world of people who would be interested in this, but they don't know because of the term dharma. Mm -hmm. And and I, that's why I think that oh, we need more of an invitation. Because if you wanted people to talk about their lives and what they think their, word, their dharma is, they wouldn't be using the word dharma. Mm -hmm. uh, they have the same thoughts, very similar ideas uh, about sharing, about compassion, about life, death. They just won't call it the dharma. Mm -hmm. and, and their... Uh, to to not allow them, to not invite them, to not offer the opportunity, I think is 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 just missing the point. So we, for me, I think that's why something like a city is inviting. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't. It's not a dharmic city. It's a city. And it, it's it's a sort of a, a life city, you know, but, and you can by engaging with it or finding it. Let's say it was like sort of like Sim City or when that game first mm -hmm. came out. You know, people play the game, yeah. and then they engage with the game. They fire out. They need. They realise. Oh, you need hospitals actually because if you don't have one, you need fire engines because if you don't have them, the city mm -hmm. burns down. Just on a very simplistic level if that were mm -hmm. in a in a sense well actually you need philosophy you need um, science you need um, you need mm -hmm. ideas of you need morality you need ethics and where do they come from where do these where do those things happen then people will engage because i'm not suggesting we should make a same city i'm just saying that mm -hmm. i'm trying to present a different model from one which starts at a presumption of knowledge of dharma Mm -hmm. um, and one which is more uh, open to uh, engagement, uh, mm -hmm. one that's more open to, more inviting. Yeah, uh, well, the problem with the word Dharma is, of course, is that it's called Dharma, which is, you know, why I sort of renamed it. But, you know, not everybody's going to call that the same thing. And so we're sort of back to this, 
problem of um, you know verbiage words you know what do they mean um, and well, do, what, do they have to be I mean does it have to be that because we're in, we live in a world of images um, and um, mm. and it, it's those things that I mean what is Facebook for instance um, we know what Facebook is now but I hadn't got a clue when I first heard the term what Facebook means it's a it's a just a thing in, in America um, and it's something that they have in colleges in America but it's now become something much bigger um, and how did you know that that spreads because of the nature of the thing not because of the name mm -hmm. and it became because it was something you could engage with people on it became a platform that allowed you but we've got 10 minutes left yeah. um, and so the word no longer has a, it probably had a meaning for Americans at the beginning and that's what allowed them in but as it spread most people just use it I mean WhatsApp you know it doesn't mean anything I suppose it's it's the invitation that it offers which is why people use it it's because it's it offers you something and that, that's what I'm looking for it's that invitation mm -hmm. Um, that a way in, and if it was a, I say, a video game, that's that's an invitation. People like playing video games, so we're in we're doing it that way. And I'm I'm not sure. It's sort of an intellectual forum needs some way of inviting people to engage and to share and to find. I think well, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's only those people who are really interested. They would have heard of Dharma, and maybe they're the only people. But anyway, it comes it comes down to this idea of what it is we're trying to do. Are we trying to engage people who are already involved in the Dharma, or are we trying to do it wider than that? And if it's it's obviously much easier if we're only dealing with people who know what the word Dharma means. And maybe that would be a, it would start from there, and it would grow from there. Mm. So maybe that's the idea: is that you start yeah, from there. Maybe. Mm, that's but, I, but I don't know because I don't have it written down and I can't refer to it I don't know what it is that I'm trying to do so I'm, I would like to, for us to, to work on that to work on that statement is to say well, well this is what we're trying to do and it can be as long or as short mm -hmm. but it doesn't mm -hmm. matter so long as it's something I can yeah. refer back to so I know I'm getting, yes. I'm getting lost yes yeah, I think that's uh, a good idea so are you volunteering? Well, well, I can I can write down what I think, and I think yeah, the, I okay. think the, the point is that we don't. You know, it isn't a person. Obviously, it is only um, an initial thought, and yeah. and you, between the three of us, and hopefully Julie as well, we we get, and then we can perhaps open that up to a discussion with other people, um, mm -hmm. either people who were on the group or other people that we know who might think yeah so we can we can come to a sort of a say a collective understanding of what it is that we're trying to achieve mm. um, well, I, I think that say. would be I think that's a, a good way to start um, I mean in starting you know new projects like this I mean they always take time to, to, to actually get a, you know, a critical mass but the important thing is, I think, to I think to try and engage those people who, for whom we already know, are uh, on a similar wavelength, and to just you know try and to you know, basically start very small and tight before you know trying to sort of get you know, to expansive. Yeah. Because um, even in that tight. If, if, I think you know, even if every one of the in the secular Dharma course basically outline their own Dharma and then perhaps an expl explanation of their own frameworks, you know, we, we might be able to see something from from that that might give us 
a guidance as to which way uh, it should evolve. Because uh, I think this is, a, you know, this is an evolutionary process once again, uh, rather than trying to try to say, you know, this is where we are, this is where we want to be. So just, just taking steps, a few steps at a time, saying, okay, we've got to this point, what have we got here? And which way does it go now? Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. But yeah, so initial sort of, you know, statement, of, or at least, sort of, or not, not, not a mission, but an actual, I guess, what, I don't know what you'd call it, uh, some sort of statement of, of objective, even if it's, you know, only temporary. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the point. It wouldn't be a, this isn't a, we're not talking about things that are fixed in stone, we're not. So that's why yeah. I don't like the mission statement is not right, because that's yeah, not, yeah. But, but it is some sort of statement about what it is that the endeavor is. Mm -hmm. Well, I think if the, if, the, if the endeavor was made quite simple to begin with, uh, we could see at the end of that process, if it sort of succeeded in some way, um, what next step would need to be taken to to actually use that information and and uh, and and take it forward or 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 not do it at all? Um, so you know, I, I think it'd be really really interesting to get um, you, know, you know people in the the secular Dharma course in particular to try and express in their own words, you know. Okay, what what is your dharma? What is it? What does it look like? Um, <clears throat> you know, can you ex express it in some way? It may not be in the way that I've done it, in the way that I've structured mine, for example. There could be any different. Who knows what could come out of it? Um, you know, people could express it in all all, all sorts of different ways, um, which might be quite unexpected. Uh, but that's that that sort of unexpectedness that. Yeah. You know, that, yeah. that could, uh, um, you know, trigger new thoughts on on which way would be best to evolve. It does. It, it's in, within this meeting. It has shifted from, in a good way, I think, from a to my. Mm. Yeah. And I, and I, that is a. It's an easier starting point. Mm. Yes. Yes. I think so. I, I sort of feel more comfortable with it too. Yeah. yeah. So maybe we should change the website. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe we should. The website. Let's and think the about channel. it. Let's think about it. Okay. <laughs> There's plenty of domains out there. I can register them all. It's <laughs> so, probably bad enough that there were about two minutes yeah. left. Yeah. So, yeah, no, so that's good. I, I might get some. So I'm, I'll write something what I think should uh, be the, some uh, a short term objective, yeah. if we want to call it that. Perhaps if you could sort of you know, give a, one of your own. Yeah, so that, yeah. Uh, no, I, I think that's good. I certainly will. And I'll, and I'll think about my dharma. Yes, yes. Because I'd like to hear that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, that's great. Okay, right. Well, uh, okay. Good to see you, Gary, and uh, yep. uh, engaging and stimulating as ever. <laughs> and uh, okay. I'll say goodbye.